So the other day I was reading through the comments on a video and some guy commented from Virginia and his last name was Dalton. And I got to thinking for some reason that sounds familiar. And later on that day, it all kind of came back to me. When I was a kid, uh, my father, he was really into the Civil War his entire life. He passed away a little over 10 years ago. Matter of fact, when we would go on vacation, it didn't matter where we went, we always swung by Gettysburg on the way home. You know, I was eight years old and I knew Niagara Falls is pretty much due north and Gettysburg was not on the way home, but we always managed to swing by Gettysburg. Uh, but my dad was very knowledgeable about the Civil War. He was an auctioneer and uh, along with being into the Civil War, he also knew a lot about antiques. But anyway, I was probably 11 or 12 years old and he found this battlefield in Virginia. Now keep in mind, uh, there was no internet then, so all his research was from books, going to the library, uh, ordering books and things out of magazines, and he figured out there was this battlefield. I can't remember where it was at in Virginia, uh, but it was a Civil War battle there, and it's not like a national monument or anything like that. It was just a cattle field. And anyway, he found out who the owner was, and he mailed them a letter, and he got a response back. He asked if we could go down there with metal detectors and look for Civil War relics. Well, this guy, he said, yeah, you sure can. Come on down. So, like I said, this is before the internet. I would have trouble finding this today, but somehow he figured out where this was, found out who the owner of the property was, mailed them a letter, they responded, so we go to Virginia. And back then, uh, when I was young, it was kind of like just going to get a couple days off school. But the older you get, the more you appreciate it. So anyway, we go to this place, and my dad had these maps. He knew where the Confederates were coming from, where the Union soldiers were. And we found all kind of stuff with metal detectors. Drop balls, hunks of cannonballs, pieces of guns, all kind of stuff from the Civil War. It was pretty cool. Well, the, I think we were there two days, and uh, he had gone back several times after that. But the, at the end of the first day, he told the landowner, you know, we're going to stop by. He had a gift for him or something, I can't remember, for letting us hunt relics on their property. So we go to this guy's house, and his name was Dalton, was his name. And that's where Dalton, Virginia, kind of came back to me. But anyway, this guy's name was Ted Dalton. And uh, he was a judge in Virginia at the time. And he was an older gentleman and a real nice guy. So we kind of stood around, bs with him for a little bit. And he said, uh, well, I'm going over to my son's place. Come over, I'll introduce you to my son. We're like, okay, you know, I'm just a little kid kind of along for the ride. So we go over to his son's place and his name was John Dalton, who happened to be the governor of Virginia at that time. So we had gone to the governor's mansion. So I just looked him up and he was governor from 1978 to 1982. So I was born in 66. Yeah, so I must have been between 12 and 14 years old when I was there. But it says here he passed away in 1986. Now he was a lot younger, obviously, than his father. Uh, so he must have gotten sick or something. And his father, Ted Dalton, I think he passed away in 89. And he was pretty old when we met him. But uh, yeah, that was weird. Reading through the comments, I see Dalton, I see Virginia, and uh, put it all together. Do any of you guys use a metal detector? Uh, my dad did that for years. I just went with him uh, on occasion. Since then, I haven't done that. But I think it'd be pretty interesting especially doing your research like that and finding places. Uh, he didn't just metal detect on battlefields, uh, you know, like around old schoolhouses or old churches and things like that, but he found a lot of stuff. And my grandfather, uh, he used to lease part of his property to a turf farm and they would grow sod on his property. He had this big flat field and it was right next to the creek and uh, the Indians were pretty, there's a big Indian population here years and years ago. And I remember going out after it rained, once they take the sod off, we'd go out and hunt for arrowheads. And you can probably still find them out there today. Uh, but each time 
I don't know if memory serves me, we'd find three or four every time that uh, we'd go out. If you guys ever want to see some of that stuff, I'll show you some of it on, uh, on video sometime if you're interested in that. And let me know in the comments if you're into metal detecting at all, but uh, history, it is something else. I remember my dad telling me about the Civil War, and you know, I'm looking at these books with them, and even then, I'm like, why are these guys just like lining up against each one another? And, and mowing each other down and I guess what they were still doing they were using smoothbore tactics which I think was called like Napoleonic battle tactics and basically what they did they just charged the other side and they were using smoothbore muskets back then and they weren't very accurate up until the Civil War when they had rifling in their barrels and they were much more accurate so what would happen was before rifling, you know, the, the muskets didn't have much of an effective range more than 100 yards, okay? So as soon as the other side could get within 100 yards, they'd shoot, and that side could charge and get to them before they could reload. Well, once rifling came into play in the Civil War, the guns had a much more effective range, and uh, they were much more accurate, three, 400 yards. So they would start shooting when they were, you know, two, three, four hundred yards out, and they could reload two, sometimes even three times before the two sides would clash, which would be probably why there are so many casualties. I'm just going off memory here, but it all kind of makes sense. So I think that was the last time uh, you kind of saw the smoothbore tactics during the Civil War. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. If anyone out there is a historian or something like that please let me know in the comments if i know what i'm talking about or not but uh, i am way off topic today by the way but the weather here has been just horrible it has been uh, i mean not super cold or anything like that but it has rained on and off for i don't even know five six days and sometimes it'll rain the wind blows, the sun will come out for 10 minutes, pours down rain again. So I haven't been doing much outside. I didn't upload the last day or two. And every time I don't, I get emails asking if everything's okay. So I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna stand inside the building here. Got a fire going in the wood stove. It did hit 40 degrees today, so that's a good thing. And it looks like uh, this weekend, it's supposed to kind of straighten up. We got spoiled there for a while. Uh, we had like 75 degree days, sunny for a week or two. That's all gone. Uh, I went down to the woodshed, got more wood, have a nice fire going. I've been working inside here, which by the way, I'm pretty much down to the kitchen. I'll show you uh, what I'm doing there in the next video, but the game rooms, I got all the trim and everything done. It looks really nice. Uh, but as far as what's coming up over the next week or two, man, we got a lot going on. The cabin down in West Virginia, Sometime within the next week, we'll have the cabin. If you remember, uh, just a week or so ago, concrete with the hosses came down, poured the pad. They did that wood stamp patio on the back. Really, really nice. And we're gonna set the cabin probably within a week. Now, before that happens, I have to go down uh, with a chainsaw, a pole saw. I need to trim all the branches, not just on the driveway. Actually, my driveway, is more cleared and more open than the main road. I need to uh, hike down that country road there, county road, probably a mile, and kind of trim things back a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna do that in the next couple days. And I also have to, uh, more stone, everybody always comments on the stone, where we poured that pad, I need to bring the stone right up to the pad. So I'll take the LX tractor down, and uh, get that all graded up so they can back that thing right onto the pad and get it set. After that, it will be uh, wiring, which uh, gonna be pretty minimal. It is gonna be an off-grid cabin. There's always debate and argument over the whole off-grid thing. I don't know if we'll be completely off-grid. I have no idea, but we are gonna have a regular septic system. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna power it with a battery pack, battery packs, and a small Honda generator. Uh, if you consider off-grid not being connected to public water, sewer, or the power grid, if that's what you consider off-grid, that's kind of what I do. Uh, it's definitely gonna be off-grid. Uh, so that's the plan for that. People are asking about the slab. 
They didn't see any drain pipes, and that was a good observation. Uh, reason is, for the bathroom, we're going to put a little bump out that'll stick out off the side of it. Cabin's not really that big. The whole footprint, 14 by 28, two stories. So we figured instead of taking up a bunch of room, you know, right in the living space or the kitchen area, we will put a little bump out on one side. Just a bathroom, shower. We're going to have a cistern tank for water. So power won't be that, I won't need that much power. Uh, probably get maybe even a propane refrigerator. Once we get the wiring done, my buddy uh, Tim, his son-in-law, we're gonna go down there. I mentioned the other day, by the way, he dropped off a whole bunch of wire and boxes and things. Uh, I actually almost have enough for what we need. He'll go down and wire it, get it insulated, and then uh, we will start with the uh, tongue and groove pine on the inside and the little bump out for the bathroom, but uh, it shouldn't take too long. I'm gonna get some help uh, down there. One of the reasons we went with this style of cabin uh, is because, you know, it's two and a half hours away. We have a lot going on around here and I can't devote the time, at least right now, to like completely build something down there or do all the work like I'm doing in this building down there. It just doesn't work. And with Hunter and everything, we just don't have the time that you'd like, but it is what it is, you know what I mean? So what we can't do ourselves, we'll get somebody down there to do it, but wood stove, generator, battery pack, bathroom, cistern tank, that'll be pretty much it. The cabin will be used for, uh, just to go down there and like, like a base camp, I guess you could say. There's a lot of things to do in that area. Uh, Deep Creek, Maryland's real close. There's, uh, it's great hunting. You can ride four wheelers and side by sides on the roads. There's state parks everywhere. Uh, Swallow Falls, Harrington something, I forget. Cathedral, there's some huge hemlocks and you can go down to like Blackwater Falls, West Virginia. Even venture down to like Dolly Sods. West Virginia is a great state, it is. And uh, we're pretty close to that Maryland line, which is nice because, you know, if you want to go out to dinner, 15 minutes away. Or if you want to go over to Deep Creek Lake, 15, 20 minutes away, but you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So the cabin will just be kind of a place to hunt out of, to hang out. And, uh, you know, we'll go down maybe every other weekend. We'll just have to see what happens. But uh, I'm going to be building a woodshed up here to take down. We're going to build a hunting shack here to take down. Uh, what we'll do, we'll set the posts and everything down there. I'll build it here, take it down with the forks and set it. And all that's going to be made out of white pine uh, that we saw in the sawmill that came from West Virginia. Uh, nice fence, gate, all that kind of stuff. There'll be a lot of stuff coming up. And we have a lot of things going on around here as well. But like I said, the weather has been pretty miserable and I just want to kind of give you some updates. I don't know how I got on that Civil War kick, but uh, like I said, let me know in the comments. That was a crazy time, it really was. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Just wanted to provide some updates, let you know why I haven't been publishing videos for the last couple of days and let you know what's coming up here in the near future. So sometime within the next week or so, you should see a nice cabin in West Virginia. I think that's about it. Appreciate y'all being here, and I will catch you on the next one.